Welcome to the broadcast ministry of Irvington Bible Baptist Church, located in Indianapolis, Indiana. Please join us for today's encouraging word. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter number 55, and then we will also be, uh, we're going to look at something in 1 Peter as well, so you might get that uh, primed and ready to go. But I want to start off here in Psalms chapter 55. Here's a psalm that uh, David wrote, and it says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. It's good to serve a God who inclines His ear unto us, who doesn't hide himself from our requests and uh, the things that we need. It's good to know that, but it's also good, as David does here, it's not like God was not going to listen to David, that God was going to hide himself from David's supplications, but, oh, but David asked me not to, so I guess I won't. That's not what's going on here. It's just David recognizing the fact that the Lord was going to listen to his prayers that the Lord doesn't hide Himself from His requests, from His needs. And uh, that's David making a recognition of that fact, and it'd be good for us to recognize that. When we pray, we're not just praying to the ceiling. It's not just bouncing off the ceiling. It's, it's, it's not a, a speech that we say just with our eyes closed or something like that. It's a conversation that you're having with the Lord. He, he gives us that opportunity. He gives us that blessing that we're able to do that. But it's good for us to recognize it for what it is. It's not just something that we do. It's not, it's not for nothing. Amen. He goes on here in verse 2. He says, Attend unto me and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is sore pain within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror hath overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then... Would I fly away and be at rest? You can go ahead and turn over to 1 Peter chapter 5. But before we get to 1 Peter chapter 5, I want to tell you a little story. And it's not so much of a story because stories have the implication of something that I'm getting ready to tell you something that's like make believe. Like, you know, long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That's my favorite fairy tale. My wife's uh, uh, favorite fairy tales usually start with, Once upon a time, this story isn't so much a story as something that actually occurred. So there were these two people. And at some point early in their marriage, they decided, it's not me and Catherine, so you just don't, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Somehow early in their marriage, they decided that they, they had uh, two little boys and uh, they didn't want to live in the big city anymore. And so they wanted to live out in the quote unquote country. So they built a house out in the suburbs and they built the house. Actually, the husband's brother actually facilitated the building of the house. And uh, they built this house. They bought property and they built a house and they put that house up and they raised their boys in this house and the boys, you know, got married and moved out and all this kind of stuff and everything. The man and wife, they, they stayed in the house for all these years. And, uh, over a course of time, they accumulated some things, right? And they didn't accumulate them all at once. It was just a little, little something here, a little something there. And it just, it just slowly but surely piled up. They have a two car garage that you can't walk through. 
They have an outbuilding that uh, you can't walk through. And uh, more importantly uh, to, to this discussion this morning is they have a, a specific room in the house that used to be at one point in time their eldest son's like last place that he was allowed to sleep before he like moved out the front door. He got kicked out of the bedroom because I think there was a dark room or something in there. I don't remember. I mean, somebody doesn't remember. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, over the course of time, the wife, she ended up being the president of the Indiana Lupus Foundation. And so they made this room into the what we reverently referred to as the lupus room. Not because if you go in there, you're going to get bit by a wolf. That's why they call that disease lupus, because it looks like a wolf bite. The blotches on your skin and stuff looks like a wolf bite. Okay. Anyway. The lupus room. Eventually, the foundation dissolved. They no longer have an Indiana Lupus Foundation. So the organization was dissolved, so that room was no longer needed for office space. So then whenever uh, the kids, you know, moved 15 different times into 28 different houses or whatever it is that they've done, and the kids grow up and this and that, and all this stuff ends up over at grandma and grandpa's house or whatever, and it's like, well, we got this room we're not using, so we'll put a little bit of it in here, and we'll put a little bit of it over here, and we'll put a little bit of it over here, until eventually, over the course of time, and this took years for this to occur, but over the course of time, it became where this entire room that was a living room at one time, you could not even put one foot into this room. It was packed wall to wall, almost all the way up to the ceiling, all the way through. You, there's no way that you could even know what was in the back of this room. Just packed full of stuff. Just sat there for years and years and years, just holding on to all this baggage, holding on on to all this stuff, all this burdensome, burdensome stuff. Just holding on to it, just keeping it there, just, just, just letting it sit there and letting it reside there and not doing anything with it and, and seeing it. And man, that's an eyesore. We're just kind of like we don't see it. We just kind of move along and, and, and everything else. Well, eventually, for whatever reason, they decided, you know what, it's time to empty that room out. So they proceeded over, you know, a few days' time of going through. They got a huge, big, gigantic, you know, roll-off dumpster out in the front yard and everything else, and they're just going through uh, to throw everything out. Now, me, some of you have moved with me, or, you know, helped me move. Help me move. Some of you have moved with me, but most of you haven't. We know this because we're still friends. <laughs> Me, I'm like, I don't know what's in that box. and If I don't know what's in there, I'm not going to miss it if it's gone. Just get rid of it. I just, I just, I'm not, I don't know. Throw it out. I don't know what it is. Kirk about has a heart attack every time he helps me, helps me move. He's like, just let me know when you're ready for stuff to go in a vehicle. I'll show up. I don't want to know. I don't want to be involved in the decision-making process. Not, not, uh, not, not, not the wife of this couple, though. She has to go through every single box, every single envelope in every single box to see what it is, to see whether, you know, it's just keep or throw out. So it's a long process and everything else because she just wanted to hold on to some stuff and everything else. And I know you're wondering to yourself, what in the world does this have to do with Psalms chapter 55 or in 1 Peter 5? I'll explain it real soon, real soon. Holding on to all this stuff. Didn't want to let it go. Whatever. Finally gets rid of the majority of the stuff. The majority of the stuff. Well, here's the thing. So all this stuff was piled in this room for years and years and years and years and at least 20 years. At least 20 years, maybe longer. Now... You go to walk into that room and you step in there and you almost fall down to the crawl space because there was so much, there was so much burden on that that the floor joists actually broke underneath. You look at me like you think I'm making this up. I'm not making this up. I got there and I would say, hey, hey, come on in here or whatever. And I'm like, what's the trick? Well, well just come on in. And I stepped in and I, it was like, it was like, a big hill of a roller coaster. It's like, ooh, whoa, what is going on? The floor joists 
cracked under all that pressure. Okay. David, back here in Psalm chapter 55, uh, he's talking about all these burdens and everything that he has. And man, if I could just be like grow wings and be like a dove and I could just fly away and get away, then I would be at rest. Well, here's the thing. You don't have to grow wings and be like a dove to get rid of the burden. And you don't have to let the burden break you down and tear you up and ruin your foundation. You don't have to allow that to happen. You can just simply follow the prescription that we have over here in 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 6, the Bible tells you to humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself. Don't ever ask the Lord to humble you. He can and He will. You don't want anything to do with that. Take my word for it. Verse 7 is what I want you to notice for the encouraging word today. Casting all your care upon Him, for He careth for you. So you don't have to let all those burdens build up and pile up. You don't have to hold on to them and you don't, you don't have, you, you don't have to allow that just to be tearing up your foundation and tearing you down and weighing you down and putting all that pressure on you. It doesn't have to be that way. This is all you need to do is pray and cast those burdens, cast all those cares upon the Lord because He cares for you.